it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together and our messages of hope. My name is Jared, and today begins our Easter week, or Holy Week, set of talks. If you end up listening to this at a later date, know that today is April 6th, the Monday after Palm Sunday, and it's 2020, so we are in the midst of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. During this Holy Week, we will share a message each day that centers on one word or idea and how it's connected to hope. We'll focus much of our time on one story from John chapter 11 that involves Jesus and three close friends named Mary and Martha and their sick brother, Lazarus. This is one of the best stories. Um, If you believe it's a true story, it's one you should shout from the rooftops. Before we dive in today, let's take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for this day you've given us. We thank you for Easter week, this holy week to reflect on all that you've done for us, that you've taken on flesh and human suffering, that you've gone to the cross for forgiveness, that you've conquered death and brought about new life. Lord, we thank you for your love and your grace. Be with each person today in their struggles, in their pain, in their difficulties, and in their joy and hope as well. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's message is called Confusion and Hope. These are confusing times. This might be the most confusing time of our lives. Things are off. This is like nothing most of us have ever seen. And we do not have clear answers about the next steps. It's okay to be honest about the confusion we are in. This is rough. And still, I believe there is hope specifically hope in Jesus that can help us get through confusing times. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German pastor who uh, shepherded an underground church in the midst of Nazi Germany until, until he was thrown in prison and ultimately executed, he said this in one of his letters from prison. He said, I do not understand your ways, but you know the way for me. Lord, I do not understand your ways, but you know the way for us. Uh, There's a band, uh, Bifrost Artists. They have a song called Bonhoeffer's Prayer that actually has that that in it. It reworks that. So give a look to that after this video. Okay, so let's look at the story today. This is John 11, verses 1 to 6. And here it goes. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of uh, Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with her perfume and wiped her wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Two sisters send a message to Jesus that their brother is ill. His response is a bit odd. He does not believe this illness leads to death, but to God's glory. Let's stay here for a second with with what Jesus said. Jesus believes that death is not the end, but God's glory is the true end. This is a weird answer given the situation, given the setting and and the pain they're going through. But when we look at the whole Gospel of John, we get a clue as to what's going on here. John is is written for the early church to give them hope so that they might have uh, life as they believe in Jesus. It's to comfort them and point them and say, find Jesus and have life. And and this Lazarus scene is the climax of Jesus' miracles. And And it's right in the middle of the letter. After this scene, we move to the passion of Jesus, his death, and his resurrection. But this is right in the middle of the letter, the high point of all his miracles. And I believe the big point that Jesus is making for the first church and for the whole church since is that death is not the end in the believer's life. And we will see that symbolically through Lazarus as this story unfolds. But in Christ, even our earthly illnesses do not terminate or end with death. 
but instead the real end will be the glory of God through resurrection and new creation. Jesus doesn't say that this particular sickness will not lead to death. It does. Lazarus does die. But death will not be the end. This is confusing. But for followers of Christ, the hope-filled promise is that though our illness might lead to dying, that is not the final word. The final word is God's glory. And right now it is confusing. Sickness is confusing. Death is confusing. But in Christ, it leads to glory and new life. Now, there's one more thing in this story that gives us good hope amidst confusion. The sisters send the message and they identify Lazarus as he whom you love. They don't ask for a miracle or demand anything. They just state something that's true. Lord, you love our brother. Let's hear that text again, this particular few lines. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. The text says emphatically that he loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. And then it says he waits two days, which is so confusing, but he does love. This passage goes out of its way to say, Mary, he loves her. Martha, he loves her. Lazarus, he loves him. This is what the story gives us so far. It gives those first listeners and us today in trying times. This is what it gives us. It doesn't give us all the answers. And it seems like God's waiting. And God's response isn't always, okay, I'm here and I'm going to fix everything to get your life the way you like it. That's not his response. God's time does not seem good to us. Many of us know the end of this story, but this family, these do- these women, these siblings do not know the end. And every family since and every family today that goes through trials doesn't get a clear picture of the end of their story. And right now, the sisters and some of us only know the waiting. But right now in their confusion, the word from Jesus is, I love, I love you, sister. I love your sick brother. I love you. In our confusion, we hear and trust that death is not the end, but the glory of God will break through. And in our confusion, we hear that Jesus is the one who loves. Is that enough during our confusion and waiting? Our present sorrows and death will lead to God's glory. And in the midst of the pain, you are loved by Jesus. I pray that is enough for you this moment. I pray that is enough for you today. I pray that that is the daily bread that you need and God provides. God bless you all and we'll see you next time.